changed a lot in the last maybe 20 years, maybe even 30. And for some of the older folks, maybe 50 to 60. And so we've seen an increase in our culture as far as our media and our television and our entertainment and, and all these things go more and more into this perverse state. Can anybody witness to that? Can anybody say they've seen something moving that way? So what I want to talk to you about is why our nation specifically has come to a point that it is so demonized. Why is everything becoming so rampant in our country? Why are we seeing these manifestations? Why are we seeing it now? Why is it happening at this point? And so, um, so Jesus has a scripture. In Matthew 12, 43, he says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. And then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last day of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be also with this wicked generation. So you see that this direction is not just pointing to the individual person, but a generation in itself. So what happens to a nation is they become delivered, and God comes into the nation. They reject the pagan ways, because most countries start out that way, at least through the Old Testament they did. And so you see God come into a country. Well, what happens when the nation in itself rejects God? And they turn back to their pagan deities. They turn back to the, what well, I'm going to go over as the gods of the Old Testament, right? That caused Israel to stumble. Well, what happens is when you reject the pagan deities and God comes into a country, he cleans everything up. There's a moral law establishment. We know the Ten Commandments. We're, we're guided by prayer. We're guided by understanding the, the ways of God. But when we reject that and we start pushing that out, what happens is these pagan deities try to re-influence the nation so they can come back in and paganize it. You often see through the Old Testament that, um, let's see here, in Exodus, the Israelites, when they would turn from God, they would turn to Baal. And Baal typically is the God of prosperity, and he comes in first. They worship the golden calf. You see through the book of Numbers that the children of Israel were casting their children over the fire of Moab. And then you see throughout Judges that the children of Israel would turn from God as the generations would change back to the Asherahs and the Baals. So we see that when a country rejects God, when, he, when, when God has come in but they reject him, that generation is worse than the first because now it has been swept, prepared, and put in order for those spirits to come back. So every time Israel rejected the laws of God and moved in this direction, three gods would come in. You would have first, you would have Baal. Um, so I don't believe our, our nation was a Christian nation, but I believe that our nation was built on biblical principles. I think that, you know, uh, the Ten Commandments, I remember, were, were talked about a lot. You were told to abstain from sex until you were married. That, you you know, there was always your prayer time. Your parents encouraged you to pray before you go to bed. And so, growing up that way, I don't even, I've not heard that in a long time. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if I have, it's not been as frequent. So, we are one nation under God. Now, I don't know what God they serve. I know the one I serve, you know, hallelujah. But, I don't, you know, have they returned? So that's the question that I'm going to propose. And so how do they return? Well, the number one is a civilization that turns away from God. We reject the laws of God. So starting around the 1960s, we saw a uh, prayer being discouraged and removed from the schools. The younger generation, see, any time they wanted to change a generation, Baal would come in. And so what he would do was if he couldn't reach the current generation, he would attack the next so he could indoctrinate them with pagan ideas and bring up a pagan society. So we see in the 1960s that prayer began being discouraged from the schools. And in 1980, we saw that a push for the Ten Commandments to be taken down. Well, when you take away the, the morality and you take away the ways of God and you stop encouraging the younger generation, where do they get their influence? Right? So it started by attacking the next generation, the youth, the, the, the small compromises, little things. Things that now people are like, eh, don't worry about praying. Eh, don't worry about 
about the Ten Commandments. Jesus loves me. Come on. That's not following the ways of God. But, but that's what's happened is that they've discouraged the generation. So they, they've left the foundation of living a godly life and understanding your identity in Christ. So it's an agenda to get our country to forget God and its law. The goal in ancient times of these false gods was to turn the children of Israel from the commandments of God in the same way we can see we're moving in that direction of, of our country being paganized. It even gets deeper than just teachings in schools about hobbies of young children, the food they eat, the television they watch, even our culture slowly being changed into a pagan nation. So here's just a few examples that I like to show you because I, you know, growing up in this part of the time, in this generation, I've seen the iPhone come out, I've seen the cell phone get popular, and I've seen it come to where it is now. And so what started out was just a, a fun app called Snapchat, right? Where you could share fun pictures, and you could share media with people, and send them a picture, and put a little message on there. But now, the upper, the influence of the media has, has used it to convince, you know, young girls that they're not valid if they're not promoting themselves over this app. And so where did that turn into? Well, it started as a fun app directed for kids, right? But now we have OnlyFans, which is the same thing. But now women are promoting themselves, and they're looking for validation through this. And, and so it's almost as if the world has put this thing out that you, if you don't do this, you're not worthy. Right. Right. And this is because of the demonic influence of our media and entertainment. When we begin making small compromises like not praying in the home, not praying in schools, not teaching the children the truth of the laws of God and obedience to our sovereign and holy God, we, we've left it. And, and it turns into they've forgotten it completely. And, but in turn, we don't take it seriously. I didn't take it seriously growing up. I rejected it. I didn't care about it. Nobody stressed it to me. But the second, second example is foods, and this may sound funny, but I, I want you to think about this. And some may call it a coincidence, but I don't think it is. Anybody notice the Hubba Bubba gum tape? It's almost the shape of a dip can. Any, anybody ever notice that the Little League chewing gum or Big League is a, a bag of <coughs> chewing tobacco with someone that a child can look up to to replicate? You see the influence in that, right? And so even, even to the point that, that if that wasn't good enough, I remember growing up seeing candy cigarettes on the aisle and bubblegum cigars as if, you know, I should be drawn to that. Why? Because the enemy wants to influence you and make you think you need something you don't want to build strongholds in you, to prepare workstations for demonic spirits to come in if you would continue in that scene. A stronghold... And those are just a few things I think about the demonization of our culture and, you know, where it may seem harmless in the long run, it's building workstations. And we understand them as strongholds. Demons will, through these strongholds, take people deeper and deeper into addiction. A stronghold is a carefully constructed belief system based on a lie that controls our thoughts, conscious as well as subconscious thoughts. These thoughts affect our emotions and in turn our behavior adjust, and our behavior adjusts to the belief system which is based on the lie or the deception. The deception is if you do this, you'll look like them and be like them. Right? So Jesus here gives us a model for deliverance. In Matthew 21, 12 through 15, he says, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple. We saw that he went in with authority. We saw that he drove out those who were causing the controversy within. And overturned the tables and the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. We see that as Christ went in, he disrupted and cast out the money changers and he tore down the strongholds. But see, if, if through this influence we continue to sin, we build those strongholds back up for them to come back, finding it swept, empty, garnished, and ready to be re-inhabited. So the interesting thing here is the, the workstations are not cleaned up. And so that's where they play on. They play on that, and that's part of the, the agenda is the influence. <coughs> we, through the influence of the gods of the Old Testament that have now returned, have put workstations back in our nation. The, the country being swept clean, garnished, put in order, suitable for them to re-inhabit and begin influencing them. We must also understand that the kingdom of darkness is a reflection, a corrupt reflection of the kingdom of heaven. So you understand that as we have these 
uh, lowercase g gods because they're not him. They are uh, lower. They, they're, they're demonic spirits over territories who go and conquer these things. They operate in the same system. So they operate through principalities. They operate through powers. They operate through rulers of darkness. And so we can see that through their influence, through their influence on a cultural scale, we can see that they've sent out demons with assignments to cause addictions in our culture. Yep. Yep. And so the lowercase g gods have returned and built their empire through the principalities and powers by sending these assigned spirits out. This is why our nation is demonized. And I just want to tell you guys a little bit about Baal, a little bit about Moloch, and a little bit about Asherah. Because I want you to kind of understand their roles in ancient Israel, but also in America. And so he was called Baal. This is how Baal has played a role in influence the demonization of our nation. He was called Baal, chief god of the Canaanite pantheon. It goes all the way back to the Canaanites. And he was one also... <clears throat> In most cities and countries, they had their own bells. You notice in Judges, they had the bells and the Asherahs. You look at the golden calf, they turned to it in Exodus. They all had their different version of bell, but they all served it for the same purpose. What? Prosperity. Right? So even families had their own idols of Baal. When the children of Israel would turn from God, they would serve the bells. He was always first. Because Baal promises fertility, prosperity, increased gain, and fruitfulness. Baal was the head of the other gods, Moloch and Asherah. He was the, the first to come in. So we saw Moses had dealings with Baal. We saw the prophet Elijah had dealings with Baal. He was the most responsible for turning Israel away from God because he was number one. He was the first one that they would turn to. He's also known in the Greek as Zeus. Anybody didn't know that? He's an anti-God. His, his intentions were to oppose God in all forms, and he is the reason they separated from him. But Baal come to America. Absolutely, being that God has been and is being casted out through stealthy planning, he's influencing and leading the people to depart from the laws of God. Like I said in the beginning, it started in the 1960s. It started back then when the laws of God were challenged in public places, in public squares of like New York City, and prayer being pushed away from school. They removed the influence of godly living from the next generation. And so what would be the sign of his coming? He is the God of apostasy. He is known of taking a nation that follows God and turning them away. Well, it starts small, and the door only has to be opened so far. You only have to open the door a little bit for these things to come in, and it's happened. Even the children were led in prayer by their teachers. There was an importance in our nation of bringing up the next generation, understanding the fear of the Lord and giving Him reverence, understanding the power of prayer and reading the Word throughout the, the all the stories of, of Israel throughout the Old Testament. You see a pattern in it. It begins with a form of indoctrination. You know, you look at Daniel when he was taken captive in Daniel 1, and it says, and they tried to teach them the ways of the Chaldeans. So in Babylon, we see that form of indoctrination starting and that's where it happens because that's how they would attack the nation. So Baal's process was for the people of Israel to forget God's name, to stop knowing God, to forget God and forget they ever knew him. And I don't know about y'all but I've met people on job sites and, and, and stuff when I've been out of state, they've never even heard of this. Yeah. They've never been to church. Some of my generation don't really care to go to church. They don't, they don't have no interest in it. They don't regard God, they don't regard anything regarding that because why? Because that was taken away. Nobody taught them that. Nobody brought them up in that. The banishing of God started in the 1960s. America removed prayer from the public school alongside the Bible being taught there. There was a change, a huge deal for the spirit of Baal, and a strategic one. When Baal couldn't get one generation, he would focus on the next. If he could take hold of the children, he could take hold of a nation. He weakened the transmission of faith from one generation to the next, causing God's ways to become alienated from them. Baal's American agenda... Uh, it wasn't limited to schools. Instead of promoting God in the media, music, literature, and other forms of entertainment, they become consumed with bashing him and making a joke out of him. You know, a lot of these influencers nowadays that your children may watch or your teenagers may watch or even your young adults like Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, which I like Jordan Peterson, but he says some weird things, but they push this agenda, Mr. Beast, they push this agenda to push for prosperity. Yeah. They want you to chase the money. They want you to chase the riches. They want you to chase the women. And so even the young women are encouraged by their influencers to do the same thing, to participate in sexual culture outside of the covenant of marriage. Mm -hmm. But you can see how that influence started with little things. Yeah. And so 
they struck down the Ten Commandments and, and banished them from public square. They began the process of removing, removing the need for instruction on how to live lives based on the laws of God. It became something to them that just wasn't important. What's crazy is, to me, as we've seen in the last 15 years, a rise in the desire for prosperity. There's always been a push to make money and be a superstar. But right now, our entire youth and young kids are looking up to video game players, influencers, people who are pushing an agenda of prosperity and money. And there's even a song out, and, and people think like, oh, when you say prophets, that's Old Testament. No, listen, there's a, there's a song by Doja Cat. Her song is called Demons. And what does she call herself in this song? She refers to herself as a cash cow. That's Baal. She's a prophetess of Baal, and she's promoting the agenda. You know, anybody ever heard the kids running around singing, Paint the Town Red? That's her song. She wrote that song, so you can see the influence coming through that. Now, how is Asherah or Asherah, there are many names for this goddess, lowercase g goddess, um, how is she influenced and played a role in the demonization of America? Asherah is also known as the Enchantress. She's a god of witchcraft and a god of sexual immorality, right? Uh, a title given to her was Queen of Heaven, also referenced. She was tied to the lights of the sky, the moon, the sun, which was considered her brother, oddly enough. But I feel like that's where a lot of this astrology comes from, where they're pointing to the stars for direction. They're pointing to the, the moon, the lights, the, the planets. They're leaning toward this for some type of direction because she was known for that. This was, uh, she was very closely affiliated with Venus. And so Venus is also known as like the planet of love. And so that plays on the sexual and moral agenda, agenda that she pushes in the nation. And so she was also known as a, a god of war, of sexual morality, and witchcraft in high aggression. She was the goddess of prostitution in ancient Mesopotamia. The prostitutes of ancient Mesopotamia looked at her for guidance and prosperity. She was a seducer. She was associated with partaking of alcohol, and her dwelling was often referenced to be a tavern or a bar. So what she would do is she would she was a specialist in love magic. This is what happened, and she used by the stars. The prostitutes would worship her for prosperity. She would go into these taverns, and she would lure them in by the magic, right? And so her symbols were often naked women statues that they would worship or astrological signs. She was the goddess of magic and spells, and like I said, specified in love magic. Her worship was conducted through carnality, sensuality, and open sexualities. Often in Babylonian times, they would worship her by having orgies. And also another form of worship, which this is going to ring a bell for you, is the men in that culture would mutilate themselves with scalpels. Yeah. And they would hold up the scalpels and worship her with a new identity as a woman. See, her... her job or her assignment or her goal was to take the generations of men and bring them to a feminine stand, but yeah. also to play on the woman's curse of wanting to be dominant and over the men, and so she would try to ring the, rise them up wow. and empower them with themselves, their prosperity and all these things. So how many of our girls are influenced in the nation this way? How many people are we say, seeing that even children, they want to mutilate themselves. Why? Because the enchantress has made her way into our country. Wow, this nice. influence has influenced them through the media and through the uppers. Because if you don't believe the entertainment, you know, Emily said something crazy to me the other day. She said she has to watch what Daylon watches on YouTube Kids. Wow. Yeah. Man. Yeah. How, far, how far will he go? You sure do have to. You have to because the influence is real. And so that's what the enchantress does. Even Baal was many regions and societies, they had their own Baals. So was it with Asherah. They had the Asherah pole. They would dig trenches for Asherah. They would um, do many things just as they did Baal. But in the Greek, she was known as Aphrodite. Mm -hmm. To the Romans, she was known as Venus. So, the 2023 Wonder Woman. The Barbie. Amen. That Barbie movie. Yeah. Amen. That's that's the influence of Asherah or Asherah. So, first understanding, she typically follows Baal. A lot of the times they reference her as the the wife of, of Baal. Baal will come in first, and he will ch choose the society, and he will he will promote prosperity and money and chasing and, and, and all these things. He'll set his golden calf up. Anybody ever notice that when the stock market began to come up, they they put a bull in the middle of New York City. Wow. That's a symbol of Baal. Add something. They, they also, some people refer to her as Baal, <coughs> the mother, the mother of all things, They're going all the way back to the false idea of Lilith. So here now you have ancestral spirit. Let me tell you something. We are 
addressing a lot of ancestral spirits in our deliverance. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Even, even for Reese here, we did deliverance on him one time. And we had to cast a witch doctor spirit off of him Amen. ten generations back. If someone in his bloodline was a witch doctor. That's big. But once Baal comes on the scene, he brings her onto the scene as well. Her, his entry allows her entry. So he pushes the agenda of prosperity. She begins pushing witchcraft and sexual immorality. And I think that pretty much sums up our culture at this point. But there, there, there is more to it. She would push and influence a culture to shift from biblical sexual values to that of pagan, to which we've seen a rise in hookup culture. My generation don't even want to get married no more. They just want to sleep around. And that's just the truth. Nobody tells them anymore, don't have sex before marriage. Don't live biblically. Don't push this to, to stay in right standing with God. They don't even say that no more. They've removed it. So we've seen the rise of hookup culture where they don't want to be married. They want to sleep around. No morality. No standard. It's a do-as-you-wish culture. Yep. And that's what they encourage you. They say, be what you want to be. Be how you want to be. Operate the way you want to. What makes you comfortable? No, your flesh is seeing And listen, people that aren't saved, and without God, none of us can do anything but sin. Right. And, and so we have to understand that that influence pushes heavily on that. The sexual revolution, I believe it was around the 1960s, we seen the homosexual movement start to, to rise. Right? That's not a coincidence that the, uh, that the prayer and the laws were taken out also around that time. And if you study back to that time, you'll see a lot of the homosexual movement picking up. Wow. And that was the start of what we now know as the alphabet community. And so... <laughs> it's just real. When it, it used to be emphasized the wait till marriage, they don't want to push it. But this in our culture has become what we think a new morality. But it's only the reoccurrence to what part of the world has already experienced the return of these pagan deities. The spirit of Ishtar would, would move on a culture first in changing the morality of sexual conduct and then advancing and changing our identity, giving people identities pertaining to sexual ideas. So that's where you find your transgenderism. That's where people are identifying as helicopters and frying pans. And I'm just being real because there's people out there doing it. But how you, you, you laugh and that's crazy, but, but there are people that are demonically influenced to that point. Yes. I mean, I saw a video the other day and it had this dude with like a guard on his face, like a hamster or something. And he said, and the, and the lady asked him, when did you start realizing you were different? He said, well, I was about four. What? Wow. Don't no four-year-old know where he's at. I was playing with Legos. Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. But that's the influence. And look how deep it got. Yeah. Four years old. Yeah, you got to watch YouTube for your kids. you got to watch what they watch. <laughs> Not to mention the content we watch over today that's filled with thirst traps, with pornographic material. It's crazy, but, you know, you know, everything at this point can be pornography. <laughs> they, they really ain't went too far. And, and so we get our porneia, pornography from the word porneia. And this word originated with Ishtar. She would push it by her naked goddesses and prostitutes going out and sexualizing a nation. So now we can see that, and, and if you go anywhere on the internet, you'll see that they've sexualized cartoons. They've sexualized video games. They sexualize every female video game streamer that your children may look at or watch. And every content film I've seen, there is some form form of type of seduction that's almost love magic that would lure people in to the to the thirst traps, right? So they set these up. She sets these up to lure you in. And so, the, you know, the worst part is you don't have to go far to find them. Facebook feeds, Instagram feeds, mothers have to put YouTube kids. It's all part of their agenda. So, so we can see there that, you know, this push for sexual morality and now accompanied by witchcraft, we've seen that, that she reached to the stars. She was the goddess of the sky. She was known as the planets, right? So how many people notice that a lot of our young women and men in the culture have crystals around their neck? Mm -hmm. Well, they also believe that those crystals release vibrations that give them inner healing, peace, joy, comfort. Well, what does that go back to? It goes back to leaning to those astrological signs that she brought in as a form of worship to serve her. So when they would look to the stars, they would look to her. Now they look to a crystal that tells them what they can get from it. But it's witchcraft. It's demonic influence. These people are leaning to supernatural powers influenced by pagan deities that are not God. And so they're, cons they're, they're convinced that that's going to save them. But how many people know that temporary things 
don't lead to eternal things. Amen. Amen. So then we look at Moloch. How is Moloch, how has the, the, the destroyer, how has Moloch influenced and played a role in the demonization of our culture? He's known, so he's known as the destroyer. And also the abomination god. Moloch can be translated as king. And I, I want to step back to Baal for just a second because I, I, I just thought about this. But anybody notice that like in the higher clothing brands you got Balenciaga? Wow. Did you know that in Latin that means Baal is king if you separate it out? Baal in yeah. Now, oftentimes in that culture, they would name their kings or children or whatever based off the religious deities they served at the time. I don't think that's coincidence. No. <laughs> but everybody wants to wear Balenciaga. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to touch that for a second. But back to Moloch, he was the, the god of child sacrifice. Right? So the children of Israel would often, for prosperity, toss their children over the fire of Moloch to receive prosperity. Sometimes healing, sometimes other things. But all three gods served a purpose for prosperity, but they all had independent assignments. Witchcraft specifically, prosperity specifically, and abortion specifically. So if you can't, if, you, if this generation ain't working out, kill it. And that's what, they, that's what the agenda was. And so Moloch was the god that came in after Asherah, and they all came in one after the other, the other complementing one. The increase in sexual morality, because what do you get when Asherah influences a culture with sexual immorality? You get a lot of unwanted pregnancies, right? You get an increase in sexual morality, you get unwanted pregnancies. Because hookup culture has told them, just go to the clinic. There's songs that they sing about, just go to the clinic. She, I didn't, I didn't believe it. She told us this when we had our Elijah Project podcast that there was a song that talked about a girl saying, "Get some money and go to the clinic." No, that's real. I went and listened to it. I went and checked it out. So, how many of your children are listening to that? And and and, and you know what's crazy is the pagans will mask it. Well, do whatever you want. Yeah. Be happy. Be joyful. Live your life. My body, my with All this stupid stuff. It's ignorant. Because it's opposition to the laws of God. And we have to return back to the morality and the laws and ways of God. Otherwise, our nation in itself will be further paganized. They say, your life will be a lot better if you abort this child. <coughs> you can really live your life. If you have this child, it's going to hinder the prosperity of your life. Wow. So what did the children of Israel do? They offered their children over the fire of Moloch. What do we have in this country that's so glorified and pushed an agenda of abortion? That's not a coincidence. Yeah. And it's all statistic. I mean, it's all, it's all clearly you can see the pattern as it starts here and pushes from the departure from prayer, the departure from the laws of God, into the culture consumed with chasing money, sexual culture, witchcraft, relying on false powers that just are not of God. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the church, the, the Bible says, and they will deny the power thereof. What power are they leaning to? The power there, they're denying. you got to think about it. The culture is influenced by power. Yes, sir. Uh, also, like the, the push of birth control and uh, plan B to, to stop it from getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that you can continue in your... Absolutely, and, and that's the that's what we were about to hit next is the pathway that they create, that Moloch creates, is he plays on the sexual influence of Asherah, and so when he plays on this, he gives him a pathway to go to the clinic, continue in sexual immorality with no repercussion. And so what is that a form of? It's Moloch worship. It's saying every time I want to continue prospering in life without this hindrance, I can continue in sexual immorality but there's, because there's a pathway that I can take to not have to deal with it. Ain't that, ain't that sad? Yes. Ain't that crazy that our culture doesn't understand the, the value of the life that God puts in it? <clears throat> and to see that child born and to raise that child. But we've we've taken the, the, the covenant of marriage, the sexual portions, and we've just destroyed it in this nation. It's been separated. It's been taken out. My culture don't even want to get married. There's three falls of man. And at the, after every fall, God said, be fruitful and multiply. Create my image on this earth. And it's always been the goal of darkness to stop that. Mm -hmm. yep. So we, we see the influence on our nation from the, how the other gods, the lower case <coughs> G gods of these pagan deities, uh, change quite a few things for our culture. And it's crazy to me how they really all tie together. 
We saw that Baal pushed for prosperity. We had people, the young men, the leaders, the priests, the providers of the home, not pursuing a purpose and identity in Christ, but pursuing their own purpose and identity in how much money they can make, how many women they can have, and all these things. And we see a rise in sexual immorality and witchcraft, relying on a false power for peace to keep people in bondage, right? And so... Now you've got unwanted pregnancies and they're pushing for the agenda of worshiping Moloch, which is abortion. Okay, so how does this affect the demonization of our nation? We've seen the influence. We've seen that it has created these patterns, these curses that have allowed people to be demonized because they've operated in these patterns to pass down generational curses. When we teach a nation or teach the younger generation to willingly sin and operate that way, continually conduct themselves in a sinful manner, what happens is they build strongholds. Mm-hmm. That little boy who gets the chewing gum eventually is going to get a dip. That event, that little boy who bought the candy cigarettes is eventually going to get a vape. And what's it going to turn to? The candy flavored THC products? What's that going to turn to? Might as well do the real thing. You can see the strongholds of how, even when it went from just a small app, you know, as she said, as she was the goddess of prostitution. It started with Snapchat. It started with the females of the entertainment industry pushing this, well, be positive with your body. Promote yourself. You can be you. Sell yourself. And that's the validation they look for. I see it all over Facebook and Instagram. These women, they they, they want validation for their OnlyFans. You watch like certain podcasts. They're always talking about it. Why? Because Ashira and her prostitution has come into America. And it may not be as open. I, I heard a guy say if it was behind the camera, it didn't really count. No. Whatever you do, anything, it counts. Mm-hmm. Whenever you speak anything, it counts. And so when you look at this agenda, you see that it may not be physical prostitution right now. You may think, well, it's just they're just selling pictures, but how far will it go? And where did it come from? And we don't pay no mind to it. But we've allowed the enemy, by rejecting God in our nation, to these pagan deities to come in and influence the younger generation. Why? Because they want the nation to fall away from God and in itself. They don't want people to see people saved. They don't want people to, to live in holiness. Parents, young people, raising children, looking at the young adults, recognize these things and teach them. Mm-hmm. Teach them to understand that if you form an, a, an addiction, which is a strong one at a young age, it's going to be something you're going to have to deal with or it's going to pass to the next generation. Amen. And so, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm closing up now, um, but I hope this helps you understand where Our country departed from those laws. Our country has allowed influence to come in and create these strongholds that, you know, the crazy thing is they've convinced the next generation of things that they think they need. And that's the problem, right? Instead of teaching them the power of God, instead of teaching them the the prosperity of God, instead of teaching them the morality and the ways of God, we've leaned to pagan deities. Why? Because it appeals to them. And ultimately, that has led to the demonization of our culture. So I hope this enlightens you. I hope that it helps you understand that, you know, it's real. Mm-hmm. It's real. So, Mr. Dave Painter is our next speaker. I got just one. Okay. All right.